So, you've left Lightroom, you've come over to the dark side, and you're missing your clarity slider. Well, fear not, Adobe refugees. Darktable has local contrast, which does pretty much the same thing, except, like most things Darktable, it gives you way more control. Let's dive on in and have a look. Hi, and welcome to episode 29 of Understanding Darktable. Yep, we're going to look at the local contrast module. Now, by default, this will open in one of two modes, and the mode that it will open in is called Local Laplacian Filter. We'll have a look at the other mode first, which is Bilateral Grid. The Bilateral Grid mode has just three sliders, Detail, Coarseness, and Contrast. The image we're going to use today is this one. It's an outtake from one of our family holidays to Borneo. And I've chosen this one very specifically, which will come to make sense when we get to the viewer Q&A at the end of this session. Okay, so these three sliders. The detail slider essentially is like an amount control. It's how much contrast do you want to apply to the mid-tone values of your image. Because essentially, the clarity slider in Lightroom and the local contrast module in Darktable do just that. They allow you to control or introduce and control the amount of contrast applied just to the mid-tones of your image. So it leaves the highlights and the shadows unaffected and just creates an S-curve that affects mid-tones only. So the detail value is essentially like an amount control. How much contrast do you want to apply to the mid-tones? What you'll notice is that when you dial in lower values of detail in this bilateral grid mode, you end up with sort of that 70s soft focus portrait filtered <laughs> kind of look. Not the kind of thing you would generally want, although maybe you want to mimic that look, I don't know. Uh, if we dial it up to extreme settings, we start to introduce a look that kind of looks like those early attempts at HDR where everything is just way over processed. So we'll just bring this back to around about 200% just as a starting point. Next up, we've got the coarseness control. Now, the coarseness control is basically saying what range of mid-tone values do we want to apply an S-curve to? So, if we choose a value less than 50%, so less coarseness, what we're saying is give me a really fine range of mid-tone values. And if we choose a value above 50%, we're saying, no, widen it out a bit. Give me a little bit more of the mid-tones having that S-curve applied to them. So that's the coarseness control. The contrast control is essentially saying, do we want just a shallow S-curve or do we want it to be really steep? So let's play around with this. We'll start with a narrow coarseness and as you can see the amount of contrast sort of drops off because we're now only affecting this really narrow range of mid-tones only and if we increase the steepness of that it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference but as we bring that coarseness value up and start to include a wider range of mid-tone values we'll start to see that really overprocessed look so as we bring this up we start to see that more processed contrasty look. Now, because I've kept the detail slider at around 200%, it hasn't gone over the top, although that's open to interpretation. You might look at this and go, yeah, that is over the top. Point is, between these three sliders, you can get quite a good look and some nice contrast to those mid-tones. But that's just the bilateral grid. Let's look at the other mode. Now the local Laplacian filter mode has four sliders, not three. The first one is detail, which once again is an amount control. We've then got a highlights 
slider and a shadows slider, and finally a mid-tone range. And as the name would suggest, mid-tone range allows us to control how much of the mid-tones are affected by that contrast curve. So it's a very similar control to the coarseness control that we saw in the bilateral grid mode. With the detail slider, once again, if we dial down to lower values, we sort of get this really washed out low contrast look, but we don't end up with the sort of over the top soft focus 70s portrait look that we did with the bilateral grid mode. But once again, if we drive it up to extreme values, we'll end up with something pretty over the top. The highlight slider and the shadow slider allow us to either protect the highlights and shadows or at the opposite end apply more extreme compression to the highlights and shadows. So with highlights and shadows set to 0%, the highlights and the shadows are protected from the S-curve no matter how hard we drive the mid-tone range up to extreme values. That's the theory. To be honest, I don't really see it myself, but that's what it's designed to do. So like everything, it's a case of just, you know, start at a midpoint, work out what's working for you and tweak to taste, I guess. Like I said, it offers you a lot more control than Lightroom's clarity slider. You could argue that the clarity slider was a nice one touch effect. You know, it was just one slider, you dialed it up, you dialed it down and when you got the look you wanted, you were done. This, you can finesse it a little bit more and get exactly the look you want, albeit at the expense of a little bit more time because you do need to dial it in. So I'll take extra control any day of the week. Thank you very much. Now I got an email from, I'm going to assume it's pronounced Jan. It's spelt J-A-N, but given the surname Kaluza, I'm going to take a punt that it's Jan Kaluza, if I've butchered that, Jan my apologies, said, Hi Bruce, glad you got this A73, an awesome piece of kit. I've been on Canon for 15 plus years, but recently thinking it's time to shift as Canon sit on their laurels while Sony makes progress. I'm following your Darktable series as I've figured some of it out, but your series opened my eyes to what this excellent software can achieve. It'd be interesting to see how your Milky Way shots came out. Uh, side note, I never did get out there and do them. <laughs> I'm uh, actually looking at the calendar and the next new, new moon is in about a week and a half's time, so I'm thinking I might try and get out then. I've been very frustrated in processing night photos. I always battle against hot pixels and a lot of chroma noise. Maybe the Sony doesn't suffer from it as much as the Canon's 5D Mark II and 6D in my case. Maybe you could do an episode on editing night or astro photographs in your series. Great topic. I will keep that in mind, Jan. And then I got this one from Vayman Kulkani. Again, apologies if I've butchered the pronunciation. Hello, Bruce. I'm a photography noob and love the open source software which led me to Darktable. Love your videos, detailed and informative. Keep it up. Also, thank you, by the way. Also, if you ever get a chance, could you make a video on editing landscapes with a dark, moodier effect in Darktable? For example, and he's given me a link to this image right here. So, Vayman, it was because of that source image that I chose this particular outtake from one of our holidays to use as the guinea pig image for this episode. So, I'm just going to dial right back to, well, one step actually, because we've only applied local contrast. So, if I wanted that darker, moodier look to this image, as we can see, I've underexposed this image a little bit, which was probably deliberate on my part when I think back. What would I do to get that sort of dark, moody look? Well, I'd probably start... I'd actually go the contrast, brightness and saturation module, to be honest. And I'd probably dial in some extreme contrast like that. But then I would more than likely apply a gradient filter here like so just let that 
sort of fall off a little bit at the bottom end. That way I bring back a little bit of lightness to the bottom half of this image, but I've created that sort of contrasty looking sky. Now, admittedly, that contrast has also affected this structure over the top of the road. I could probably then go through and create a fairly complex mask to exclude that from the contrast adjustment. But I couldn't be bothered doing that right now, to be honest. And, and in all honesty, I actually am running out of time to record this video. So, but given that this episode was all about the local contrast module, let's see what the local contrast module might have done in order to achieve this same effect. So we'll go back to our previous history state, jump over to the tone group. Let's just start with the bilateral grid version. We'll crank this up a little bit. The coarseness actually wants to include quite a lot of the tones. We'll adjust the contrast, might just dial that detail down. Yeah, see, I'm not really getting the same kind of look that I got out of the contrast brightness saturation module. So let's just reset this. We'll try the local Laplacian filter mode. We'll dial the detail up. That's actually not too bad straight out of the box, to be honest. Might just increase the range a little bit. Maybe that's a bit too much. Or if we dial back the detail. Well, I, I suppose in, in all honesty, I did use a mask to only affect the sky when I use the contrast, brightness and saturation module. So maybe in fairness, I should do the same thing here. So we will go for a drawn mask and there, that's reduced a little bit of the contrast on the bottom half of the image. Yeah, I don't know. I still kind of preferred the first attempt with the contrast brightness and saturation module but look the beauty of dark table is there's more than one way to skin the cat so you know have a play with some of those different modules work out what works best for you and again i think it's probably going to come down to a per image basis you know it's not going to be the same tool every time sometimes one tool might just work better it'll all depend on the lighting in the photo how moody the sky is, all that sort of stuff. I guess, you know, it's just a little bit of trial and error and experience and all that stuff. So, Vayman, I hope that offered some insight to you and didn't make you more confused than you already were. All right, I think that will do it for this episode. Um, the one thing I have not mentioned up until now is that uh, I have been producing for over 14 years now. Well, actually, no sorry, coming up on 14 years, a photography podcast called Shutter Zinc. Uh, used to do it with a different co-host to the co-host I have now, uh, but this podcast has been in production non-stop for 14 years, which would make it one of the longest-running photography podcasts in the world. It's called Shutter Zinc. You can find it at shuttersincpodcast.com. Glyn, my co-host, he's as mad as a meat axe. Don't take him seriously at all, but he is an exceptional photographer. So uh, if you're in for some crazy Aussie madness with two guys who don't take anything very seriously at all, go and check it out. All right, that will do it for this one. I will see you in the next episode.